Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called The Best I Ever Had. Mm, mm, mm. The ingredients you need, some fresh raspberries, plus a little extra to serve, 12 fresh mint leaves, plus extra to serve, a half a cup of gin, a fourth a cup of lime juice, two teaspoons of finely grated lime zest, a half a cup of crushed ice, two bottles of Cole's Pink Lemonade, or whatever pink lemonade you like, and some thinly sliced uh, lime halves. So you are going to place two cocktail glasses in the freezer for five minutes to chill, place the raspberries and the mint in a cocktail shaker, and use a rolling pin or a muddling stick to muddle, get that flavor going. Add the gin, the lime juice, the lime zest, and the ice, stir to combine, cover and shake for 30 seconds. Then you're going to place the extra ice in the chilled glasses, strain the raspberry mixture into the glasses, top with the pink lemonade and decorate with the lime slices and the extra raspberries and the extra mint leaves and serve immediately. That's the best I ever had. It better be for all them goddamn <laughs> ingredients and instructions. Damn. I always so envy people that, like, they're really making, like, these specialty cocktails at home for a little summer pool party. They look cute, but every time I do it, I get too heavy-handed with the liquor. Every time I do it, the kitchen gets so dirty, and it's not cute no more. Oh, yeah. The kitchen is definitely going to be dirty. Stuff is on my shirt. Like, how do the TikTok and Instagram girls do it so cute? They probably just have to set it up that way. It's probably all kind of shit on the floor. Yeah. Stressful. Takes all the fun out of having a good cocktail. Welcome back to Cocktails Ready Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. So, um, we do have a few announcements. I want to remind everybody, we are still on tour. If you have not already, this Saturday, we are going to be in Seattle at um, the Crocodile. Oh! So make sure you get your tickets. And you guys, only buy tickets from links that we share. Yes. You need to get the official links because we don't know who those other people are and you gonna be stuck outside of the You don't the show. wanna get gypped and you thought you bought tickets and now you hitting us up like, can y'all fix it? We don't have any control over the tickets anymore because we famous now. <laughs> Well, that's just not our responsibility. We just want to show up and have a good time. So mm -hmm. we will see y'all this Saturday. The show is a little earlier. It starts at 6. The doors open beforehand. Check your ticket to see what time you will get access to the venue. And then next weekend, we will be in Toronto at the Royal Theatre. I am so excited. I can't wait to see Aubrey. Okay, and that's gonna be on April fifteenth. I'm really excited. Just so I'm, I already picked out my airport outfit. I bought. Oh, you ain't playing with them. Well, it's just a funny shirt. Um, I got a, a hoodie, mm -hmm. and it says, "I'm worldwide, bitches." For the people that watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, Candy had got into it with somebody who mm -hmm. tried to play her and act like people didn't know who she was, and she was like, "Bitch, we were in Tokyo doing karaoke to my songs." I said, I know that's right. Don't play with it. Every now so and again, anyway. you gotta tell people, remind them who you is. Okay, I mean, it's still a North American place, but I don't care. We're international, and I'm running with it. Yeah. And then next month... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's back up. This is not a live show, but um, on April... The weekend of April 22nd, 23rd, yes. we have two events going on that weekend. The Natural Hair Show. We will be on the main stage on Saturday talking I'm about so relationships and dating. Our favorite thing. I'm so excited. I just feel like since it's a hair show, I can't wait to see how I end up wearing my hair. I know. I've been looking at looks. I really want a really cute look for that. And mm -hmm. I want a cute fit. I've been I've been looking online. Because I, I feel like you can't be on a stage. Looking busty. Especially at a show that's all about beauty and business and be looking crazy. And be looking dusty. Like. And then we'll also be at the, um, what is it, Pretty Hustle? Hustle, I forget what it's called. We'll put it in the description. Grind Pretty. Grind Pretty, yes. yes. We will be at their panel on that Sunday. And then in May, we are going to be in uh, Birmingham. I almost said Huntsville. That was last year. Birmingham, Alabama. And then we're going to Dallas. Yeah, we're going to close it out May 20th in Dallas. We'll be at Studio at the Factory in Deep Ellum. So those are our last four shows. And if you miss the shows in Atlanta, we do have a couple of events. Mm -hmm. It won't be a regular live show, but if you want to come see us, please do. Um, and tell them that you know, you're there for us. Yeah. Uh, but get your tickets. Check the link in the description box. Check the links 
in our social media profile so that you can purchase your tickets. And it's not too late to sponsor. You can email us sales at cocktailspod.com and we can send over our sponsorship packages. And you guys get your tickets now. I always tell everybody, just take the link, place it in all of your group chats and get all the girls together or the guys together or date night, double date night. I love to use anything as an excuse to go on a date. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. So y'all put the link in all the group chats and get everybody together, get cute, get fine, and come pull up and see us wherever you is at. Yeah, and then also make sure you sign up on Patreon. We have been uploading content more. And, you know, once things slow down a bit, we'll be able to schedule some more lives because we do miss you guys. We do. Um, but patreon.com slash cocktails, you can sign up and you'll get bonus content. You get early access to anything that we're selling. Um, the tickets have already been on sale, so you missed out on the early access for that. But it's a great community of people, and you might meet, meet a friend. Yeah. And if you don't have somebody to go to a live show with, it's girls that are always linking up from Patreon. And you get to get a little bit more insight into Kiki and I's life. Um, yeah, we share a lot more on We there. do. I posted something today. I waited to post it. It was from Valentine's Day because I thought me and my nigga broke up, but we didn't. So I posted it today and um, <laughs> y'all can watch it and see how Valentine's Day went. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And then also head on over to I'm curious to know.com. We have some merch on there and we have the game. Now the game is currently sold out. Y'all have it flying off the shelves. Y'all bought this last batch so quickly, but we are restocking. We'll let you guys know when those shipments are going out, so don't pay for expedited shipping, because it ain't gonna help. Yeah, don't do it. Um, <laughs> don't do it, just order the game, because you it's first come, first serve, and when we get the package in, everybody who pre-ordered will definitely get theirs, mm -hmm. and the rest of y'all, you might get it, you might not. Right. I also wanted to say about the game, there was somebody that sent us a message over the weekend, and it was a guy, and he said, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. He said, I was hanging out, with, I think he went on a double date. And he said that everybody was so boring that he was ready to just close out the tab and leave. He was yeah. like, I was mad that everybody was boring. I'm <laughs> like that too. I get mad when people be boring. Why are we here? We could be at home on the couch cuddling. He said, I remembered that I bought y'all's game and I had it in my trunk. I went outside, mm -hmm. grabbed the game, brought it back in. He said, Medina, we had so much fun. Everybody was able to break out of their shell. We asked all different, everybody learned so much about each other. I was like, well, what were y'all doing? Were y'all swingers? But, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, um, but they played the game and he was just like, thank you so much. It is a great, uh, it's a great game to get to know people. Your friends, someone you're, obviously someone you're having sex with or going on a first date with, married yeah. to, that you just want to ask some specific questions and you might be nervous, get the game. Yeah, I like to just pull it out any chance I get. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. It is. And it just takes out the awkwardness of some of the questions because you can just jump around and you can blame it on the game. Yeah. Um, also, our shirts, so we have two designs. One of them has got a cute little front and back. Make sure you get them there. We will have them available at the live shows, but in case we run out of your size, you know, may as well go ahead and get it. And you can wear it to the show. Mm-hmm. And be cute. Um, and tag us in the pictures when you guys get your shirts or you wear your shirts and stuff. We want to share those. And then I guess that's all of the announcements. Um, I do want to say something, though. What? I am just really loving my hair. And so if my eyes are drifting off into the side, it's because I keep looking at myself. Because this this hair right here, I love tapings. Y'all know I do. Mm -hmm. But this is a wig. Let me tell you, Fine Babe and Co., they hooked your girl up. She colored this. And I just slapped this wig on on the way to the studio. My wig journey has been so much fun thanks to Fine Babe Co. My wig is also from Fine Babe Co. I have a hat on. Y'all know I'm a hat girl. But I actually really do like the little how the scalp is and how it blends so well. The quality of hair. The quality of the hair is... Superior. It's so thick. You can curl it. You can wash it. You can. Yeah, it's human. I absolutely like. I literally have. She didn't even get the ad for like Instagram. I just been posting on Instagram. Like, thank you so much, fine babe. So, because I actually really. This is a fun sponsor. I like it. Yeah. yeah. So she actually sponsored our Atlanta show, and then she sent us the weeks. I've had my wig for a while. I've been wanting to wear it, but y'all know I had them the braids, braids that turned into locks. So I finally took them out this weekend and I wore my wig. Now I did get nervous uh, because it's not glued down or sewn down or anything. I'm just using clips and the little elastic band. When I was um, outside and it was windy, I thought it was gonna fly away. It didn't. 
so. It is very secure. I love the amount of combs that are in it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the elastic band at the top. Um, shout out to Fine Babe Co. because, ma'am, you are doing a great job with the quality and I like the packaging as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys are interested in seeing the hair, the wigs, uh, follow them on Instagram and TikTok at Fine Babe Co. And you can use code COCKTAILS10 for 10% off any order. Mm -hmm. Get ready that's, for summer, y'all. Yes, that's wigs, bundles, closures, mm -hmm. all that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to weird sex. You said a man is not a necessity, a man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. So this week's weird sex is... Um, it's sad, but it's an interesting story. Um, you know how, like, people be talking about choking? I was just getting choked sad. last night. Well, I'm glad that you're still here because the person in this story wasn't so lucky. Ooh. So, allegedly, this man in Houston strangled his girlfriend to death. Houston. Uh-huh. Um, he strangled her to death when they were having sex. Now, he claims that he was doing a little erotic asphyxiation which, you know, that's when you're choking during sex. But they have booked him on a manslaughter charge, $40,000 bond. He did post it. The prosecutor is asking that he not be able to drink, do drugs, or leave, and put all these restrictions on him. But I just, Are I don't know. On purpose? See, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, we don't know. This is all allegedly. All we know for sure is he got arrested for it. But the, girl, the girlfriend mm -hmm. died. And um, they're young people. And so people are saying, you know, that they don't really feel like he was just doing that because to strangle somebody... You gotta put the, all your might. The amount of pressure and the amount of time it takes as well seems like a lot. I can't wait to see how this case unfolds because when I was looking at pictures, there was also a picture of a little bitty car. And so I'm like, were they having sex in the car? I don't know. All of that isn't out to the public yet, but y'all be careful out here. Be careful, because I know there have been plenty of times when I'm just, like, so caught up in the sex in the moment that I really can't breathe, but I don't say anything, because... Why not? Because everything... You're going to be a weird sex. <laughs> I ain't going to be no weird sex. I hope not, because I would be mad. Imagine that's how you go well, out. Well, you're not going to be nothing. You're going to be dead. I think you can be mad when you're, like, you're like, please, I don't want to go. And God's like, well, nigga, come on. That's not how that works. Okay, <laughs> anyway, thank how you, you know? guys. Well, first of all... <laughs> I know. I just know some things. Anyway, thank you guys <laughs> for sending in the stories. Uh, please, please keep sending them to me. Uh, weirdsex at cocktailspod.com. If you are in the um, Atlanta metro area and you're looking to purchase a home or you just have some questions, make sure you guys hit up our friends at KDM Realty. You can call and text them at 404-951-9000 to set up a meeting. Get your house today. All right, so it's been, has it been a while since we've been in here? It I feels think so. like we have, yeah. I have been living the ultimate family life. I feel like a mom. You know how Why? parents be saying, moms say that you just feel tired every day of your life after you have kids? Okay. I went from, where did we go? Detroit uh -huh. to D.C., from D.C. to Oklahoma. And I've been in Oklahoma, and I was, you know, my sister has two babies, two under two. Ooh. And... We was waking up early every day, waking up in the middle of the night, and I was helping her with the babies. I was like, What I... are they waking up doing? So apparently, babies are like in their two, like the end of the one year and into two, they have baby nightmares. You'll never know what they're about because they can't really tell you. But so Disney will sometimes wake up, not sometimes, every night in the middle of the night, they wake up, she wakes up. And so I was trying to give my sister a break so she could get sleep through the night and so Disney wouldn't wake Kai up. So I would go get Disney. But I was like, oh, there were some nights where I was like, I had to take, somebody got to get up. Because <laughs> I'm like, babies really will be up and playing. It's time to go to sleep. They will be up and playing or up and crying. They don't care. They have no sense of time because where they got to be? Right. They, Work? They no. just need snacks in Gracie's corner. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, I'm sorry that you've been so tired. Yeah. I've been having fun. It was fun, though. <laughs> I will say that. You know, family time is fun for us. Mm-hmm. What you been doing? Um, I have been celebrating so many birthdays. Mm. Um, I don't. I never realized how many friends... 
and family I have that have birthdays so close together. So um, every weekend I've been in Houston celebrating a different birthday. Um, it started when we left uh, Miami. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Houston. And then when we left Detroit, I left Detroit and went straight to Houston from Mm -hmm. there. And then I just got back yesterday. So several of my friends' birthdays, um, I there was like this Final Four thing uh, this past weekend out there. So there was is that basketball? mm -hmm. Okay, it's for college. It's the end of March Madness, and they have the tournament, and that's how they get the national champs. So there was all of that going on. Went to several dinners, parties. Um, saw some family, saw some friends. I ended up getting a wreck. That was that bad. is scary, Kiki. It is scary, but you know what? Oh well, I'm still here, and I'm thankful for that. Um, and I'll be going to physical therapy for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I'm still here because it could have been worse. Like the other people, ooh, it just could have been worse. Um, but I've been doing that, and then trying to get ready. For, like, these next two months because I want to take a trip this summer. Where are you trying to go? Um, I'm not really sure. So I have two friends who are planning two separate trips. Mm -hmm. And I don't really care so much where we go. It's just more about time Mm -hmm. and when we can do it. And then later in the summer, I have, like, a family trip. We're either going to L.A. or San Diego to Mm -hmm. celebrate my uncle's birthday. So I'm trying to – it's so many people in my family. I'm trying to make sure that everybody's actually going to go. So I have to start now. It's so funny that you say that because my sister's turning 40 this year. That's a milestone. And so she was like, I really want to travel. And I was looking at her like... With who? You got babies. But she was like, I want to do it. I just wanted, let's just bring the kids and make it happen. So I am the head of it. She wants to go to London. Mecca loved the crown so much, loves everything royal family. And so she's like, she wants to do a a trip to London. Um, And so let's go and see all the royal stuff and mix it in with some Harry Potter stuff and bring all the kids. And all the family. And I was like, this sounds great, but are we dreaming big? Right. Or are we, re- like, can we really do this? Because it's like, when when people want to go on a trip, I'm normally like, okay, I'll put the money aside. I'm ready to pay the deposit. I'm ready to get the flight. And then pay, if we can pay on it, pay on the rest of it later. But get those initial payments down. And when you start to... to lock you in so that you know... We, we're doing this. Like, don't get me planning out stuff and blocking dates. And then y'all... There's always, like, two to three people when you get a large group where you knew from the jump you weren't coming. Right. Why did you waste my time? Now I have to recalculate everything. Why are you playing with everybody? So we actually have a call tomorrow because I'm not... <laughs> Mecca's like, well, I don't want you to stress everyone out. But you have to you have ha- a level of stress. Somebody has to stress. Because we have to pay the deposit if we're really going. And you tell and me... And this is international. This is international and it's expensive. Baby so this is passport. Some, right. It's your birthday, but I, the trip ain't on me. It's like everybody's going to have to put in their piece, or we're going to be having a London-themed party in Oklahoma. Okay. So what are we doing? Because you start making the group. They're going to be at a little and... English pub yeah. somewhere. Yeah, ain't nobody saying nothing. I'm like, does everyone... Let's start with the basics. Does everyone have their passports? Mm-hmm. No one has responded. Do y'all want to do this or not? See, and I'm glad you told me this. My mama <laughs> wants me to plan a trip, and I already told her hell to the no. <laughs> because I, I really get offended when I'm texting my siblings and it's like, I'm having a conversation with Mallory. Me and Mallory have our own chat. Mm-hmm. I didn't need to put y'all in it if y'all not going to be responding. Right. Y'all need to respond. The least you could do is respond to the text. And then it's like, I'll have to send you a separate message. Oh, so you got me on Do Not Disturb. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine. I won't disturb. That's mm-hmm. why the people going to be mad when they see where we go. Because mm-hmm. I did plan one quick trip with Mallory with all her kids and her husband. Mm-hmm. And we're going and it's no problems. And we did it in a weekend. We're not the problem. I really hope we can make this London trip happen, but my y'all are my, gonna do it in September. We're gonna do it in September for her birthday. Her birthday September tenth, and I'm just we it's something where it's like September is not that far away. It's not, and everybody still has bills. So like, and and what is we doing? So tomorrow I will have host a meeting on Zoom, mm-hmm. and if you don't make the meeting, I'm taking you off the itinerary. Well, I think that that's fair mm-hmm. because you if you can't even make the meeting, how, how can I you expect the you to go? Yeah. Mm-mm. Well, good luck. Um, oh, another you can bring thing. That on in here. <laughs> <laughs> we need to drink. Um, another thing that I did in Oklahoma City was uh, there. I don't know if I've told you about this man, but there is a comedian that I love. Kiki, his name is Jared Freed. No idea who that is. He's a Jewish who guy. Uh huh. He is hilarious. Thank you. He is on a he has a he has a few different podcasts. He has a, a, a podcast about The Bachelor. He has a podcast called The J Train, and then he has a relationship podcast called You Up with him and a, okay. another girl called her name is Jordana. So I have been saying I wanted to see him. Um, so he was in Oklahoma City. I got tickets. We went to go see him. He was so 
When I tell you this man is so funny, I want to have him on the show. I DM'd him. He was like, let me know next time y'all are in New York. I'll definitely come on the show. He is just so relatable. His whole set is about dating and relationships. You know we love that. And I just had such a good time in little country Oklahoma City. He was roasting the audience. He was like, I ain't never coming back to Oklahoma. Y'all is country up in here. <laughs> um, it was just a, it was fun. I was like, look at this little date night that I planned. That's cute. It was real cute. Um, what else did I do in Oklahoma? I went to the drive through zoo. Um, that was fun. There you was a really key... were leaving a whole ass family a life. A whole ass family life with the babies. Did you take shots at all while you were there? Not anything? one. My sister had ordered me some wine. You know Hotel Collection has wine? Yeah. I did not know that. She was like, I got you wine. I saw it on Instagram. I wonder if she saw it. Because you know we follow a lot of the she same pages. Did. <laughs> she did see it on Instagram. She told me and she ordered it. Um, How'd you like it? I loved it. I had a little glass of, of rosé. I didn't drink that much because I had to be with the babies. That was what drives me to drink. <laughs> I'm like, we're not going anywhere. Now if we're going somewhere, that's a little different. Um, have you watched The Strays on Netflix? The Strays. Oh, yes. I did watch that. It The, the black lady that wants to live a white life yeah. so it could be easier? Yeah. That was such a good movie. I thought it was uh, one of the, the... Who's the guy that does all the oh, other Peel. ones? Oh, Peel. Yes. Peel, something Peel. So I thought it was one of his movies at first. I watched it on a plane one day. Um, but yeah, it was it was an interesting movie. I didn't think it was going to go like that. Me neither. That mom said, fuck these babies. Okay, fuck these kids and fuck these kids too. I left <laughs> once, I'll do it again. <laughs> <All> Oops, spoiler. <laughs> it was. It wasn't a bad movie though. It was just, it was just interesting. It was. It was. I thought it was going to be kind of scary. Because I get scared of movies. Do you? I, I do. I still get scared as an adult. But I like when a movie can lock me in because it's so hard nowadays to find something on Netflix and you're not like, okay, I'm not watching this. Yeah. I was locked in immediately. So if y'all need something to watch on Netflix, make sure you watch The Strays. It's really good. I watched Inside Man. Have you seen that? With Denzel? No. It's, oh. um, I don't know this man's name. Very popular actor. I just can't think of his name. Um, but he is serving a life, not a life sentence. He's on death row for murdering his wife. And um, he's a really intelligent guy, and they bring all these different people into the prison to talk to him to find out clues about stuff because they say, like, he just knows things mm. and stuff. So it's like a psychological thriller series. It's really, really good. I watched it in, like, two days. Um, mm. Loved it. It was really good. I've been watching a lot of stuff on Netflix trying to um, find new stuff. Not so much movies, though. I need Shows. to find some better movies, yeah. I started watching Swarm. Oh, yeah, I watched Swarm. I love it. Yeah, well, I didn't love it. I haven't finished it. But I liked it. it, okay. I do love it. I just like how the, it's a movie about a serial killer, and I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I did not expect it to be a serial killer at all. I thought it was going to be more like a comedy. I didn't realize it would be a dark comedy about a serial killer who's obsessed with somebody. It, it, this is the one where it's based off of like Beyonce and her And they're not even trying to hide it. They got At the all. chin bite, the elevator scene. Everything. And she was really digging up old tweets to go find these people. Do you think Beyonce watched it? I think she absolutely knows about it. I don't know if she wasted her time watching it. But I know Chloe was like, ICB. You know I'm in this movie and she probably had to get permission. And then Blue was like, let me see the script. And All right, we can we can make it happen. It's a comedy. Loosen up, mom. It's fine. Yeah, I think Blue has to have approval on everything. I really do. She's so lucky. I wish I was Blue. Um, <laughs> when I got back to Atlanta, I finally went to Amore Amore. Isn't it cute? It is so cute. And I love how there's different themes each month. Right now, it's Emerald City. So uh -huh. the Wizard of Oz. Uh -huh. So it's like the Wicked Witch of the East. Her feet are in the ceiling all over, like little slippers and the Tin Man and all the the menu is based off of the Wizard of It is so cute. Like the whole vibe when you walk in, I feel like the, the scene in Sex in the City when Carrie and Big had broke up and she ran in the cold to go meet Miranda at that restaurant. For Valentine's yeah. Day? Yeah. That's what it looks like in there because there's like streamers and everything. I went before too. The food was excellent. Um, I actually left some of my food in there after they had boxed it up. And do y'all know that they chased me down the street? The to hospitality make sure? is impeccable. You feel like you're with a family. And then, like, they do, like, a little party thing. They bring you these shots to cleanse your palate. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a fun vibe. It's tiny in there, though. Be warned. There's going to yeah. be small tables, small seats. So take that into consideration. Yeah. 
I love that place. I love that place too. Um, yeah. I went to this place called Boyle House. You know, I couldn't wait to talk about the crawfish. Okay, I just have to share this because I am not a gatekeeper. If you are in Houston, Texas, there's a place called Boyle House, and I was hoping that whoever owned the place was there, but I was so busy eating, I forgot to even ask. I'm going to call them on Wednesday when they open. They're only open Wednesday through Sunday. Um, check their website for actual hours. They will start serving crab at the end of the month. This is not a paid advertisement. The food was just that damn good. We plugging this week. Okay, um, but they have the best crawfish. It was just... It was so good. Like, I low-key wish I could go back just for a day just to eat and leave. Like, I don't need to see nobody. Really? It was just so good. I mean, they have some a few other things, too, but who cares about that? It's all about the crawfish. It's the season. Tis the season to suck some heads, okay? And oh. I was just... I loved it. I went twice. And then my homegirls came with me. Well, I met them up there, and then she invited one of her friends. One of her friends was kind of cute. I meant to text her about that. That reminds me of text her was about that. Was he single? I don't know. He had to leave early to go to work. He mm -hmm. bartends. Um, so y'all go to Urban Social. It's a cute bartender up there. I don't know his shifts or anything, but I heard he always at work. Mm, See, look at me working. sharing the wealth. I told y'all, y'all always asking where the fine niggas at. There was one right there. Now, is he single? I don't know, but he was cute. Mm -hmm. And I just also want to remind everybody, what? since we are a dating podcast and people are out here struggling dating, you need to look out for your friends. I was telling one of my homegirls recently, she was like, I'm getting back out here dating and I feel like I'm in the mental space to do it and I'm ready to put my big girl panties on and dive in the pool again. Good. And, and she was like, if you like, if would you, can you like tell people that I'm looking, single and looking? I was like, you know what? I said, I sure will. I said, if I'm ever out and I see a man that I think you would like, I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna be like, hey, I have a friend for you. Like, uh -huh. would you mind meeting her? And she was like, I would really appreciate that. And if more people did that in the world, it would probably be a better place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? Like, imagine if I was out and I met a man, I know your type, and I'm like, or maybe he wasn't exactly your type, but he was a nice but guy. But you thought he would be good for me. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm like, hey, I want you to meet my friend. Like, it's exciting. It's already starting off in a different way. Mm -hmm. And what if it really worked out? I mean, I would be open to it. I just never think about it because I'm trying to get somebody for me, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe that's the greediness in me. But I do think it's, it's a good idea. I wonder how I would take it if somebody was like, I want to hook you up with my friend. If, like, I met a guy and he was like, oh, I'm not single, but I want to hook you up with my friend. I'm not going to lie. I think that would, it would make me I would interested. I be like, well, let me see your friend. Tell me about him. Tell me more. I Can would... he come up here right now? Right. Like, what's the way? I think it says something <laughs> about somebody that's looking out for their friends like that. Like, he's like, I'm married, but, like, because I think... But then I wonder, is it a trick? Is it all a ruse? I, I would wonder. I you know? The reason why <laughs> I know is because I feel like we're... I know that I want... Everybody to get relationships now. At least somebody comes. So you know how I'm always like, let's go on a double date, and is and everybody's always like, I don't have anybody. To drink. That's why I'm ready for everybody. because you want to go on a double date. Double dates, trips, <laughs> like group stuff, and it not be like. See, it's about what she wants. <laughs> no, but also if a man did that, I feel like that's cool. It's like you want you're ready for your friends to like be with people so they can come too and stop bringing that one little whore that they be bringing. Sometimes you need to bring a little whore if you want to have a good time. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, speaking of little whores and niggas. Who? Um, <laughs> oh, well, wait, before we get into today's topic, do you have any Easter traditions that your family does? Easter or holiday you don't be caring about? Oh, I care about Easter, but um, mm, I think that a lot of the things besides like going to Easter service at church, it's more so around the little kids, and I yeah. don't have one. So, and lately the kids' spring breaks, or they'll have like a little Easter holiday. And like this weekend, we're working, I'm not gonna make it back in time. Yeah. Um, but they do like Easter egg hunts, and then Phoenix's birthday is usually around Easter. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll usually combine it. But just getting Easter baskets and dressing up, you gotta have your Easter fit. You got but it's to. been so long since I've done that. It's really just church and. My mom and my sister yeah. picked out our Easter dresses. They are so ugly, but I just went ahead. I with saw it. your sister post those dresses. The little like it's soft like, pink or tan dress. It was kind of like, tan looking. And we all have them. Tank ha Disney has one, and I don't like the dress, but I've also learned. <laughs> I have also learned that what just are y'all gonna go do? with it? We're gonna make lamb chops and deviled eggs and make do a, take the kids to a little easter egg go to church uh -huh. and i always feel like a heathen when i be in church because i don't go to church that often but i do enjoy going to church and so i'm just gonna be in there and wonder if anybody listens to the show 
<laughs> and talk to Jesus. I've been talking to him a lot lately. That's good. Lately. Um, I know one year, Sean, me, Sean, and Walker did an Easter brunch. My memory popped up mm-hmm. over the weekend. It was so cute. And we did have some lamb, and we had a bunch of other little things. I miss doing that, but they're in Louisiana for the weekend, and mm-hmm. I'm not going. Okay. Yeah, the flights. It was just going to take too long to get there because yeah. I can't fly there. Yeah. I would have to drive four hours after a four-hour flight, so no. Yeah, that's a whole road trip. <sighs> yeah. Um, but okay, you guys, this week we're going to dive into our topics, and what we're going to talk about today is immediate blocks on IG or phones. Just like, what are things that immediately make you want to block someone? And this could be, maybe you don't know them, Send but Send me you... a pic. Mm. Yeah. The only way, now I want to, let me back up. Everything that I, everything I'm about to say after this, if you are fine as fuck, you probably get a pass. I do honor pretty privilege. Pretty over privilege here. is a thing. It just, it is what it is. I'm not saying it's fair. Nothing in life is fair. Um, I didn't ask to be here, and now I have to pay rent. So there's that. Um, but send me a pic. No. And it's just like that. Like like I'm just like you just. There's knew no I was conversation. Nice. I go look at your page. You ugly. The audacity yeah. and the confidence of you. You know, Niggas. I think that if you do want a picture, because I do like getting pictures from people, specifically pictures that are not already posted for the general public. Mm-hmm. But I don't need like a selfie and stuff. I think a good workaround for that, if you're if you want to ask for the picture, but you don't want to come off like Ugh, I'm about to annoy this person, talk to them about something. And ask them if they have a picture from that. Like, if they're talking about a travel, oh, do you have any pictures from your trip? They gonna slide a little picture in there where they looking good, but then they'll show you the other stuff. Yeah. You need to work it into the conversation. Like, I feel like people that do that too early, it's all about the physical for you. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, we're gonna be talking about sex. And that's the other thing. Talking about sex too soon. Or if you, th- the picture thing, if you send the picture and you really thought you looked good in this and you actually don't. And now I'm mad. That makes me mad when you do that. Because who told you you looked good? You know, I met a guy. This is another one. I met a guy the other day, and where you meet him at? Um, what was the name of that place? It's called a door. Um, so I meet this guy. He was cute, mm-hmm. I thought. Then he, he we're texting. Me and my friends agree he's an attractive man. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I don't have on drunk goggles. It's three people who have given the thumbs up. So we're texting. Everything is fine. Um, and then I get back home. He says, hey, are you on IG? I was like, oh. But he was cute, I thought. So I was like, yeah. So I was like, let me just go ahead and get it out of the way. You can go ahead and see and make your assumptions. Mm-hmm. So I sent it to him. He was like, okay, cool. I just followed you. And so I went, didn't see it. So I was like, what's your page? So I go to his page, and I was just like, who the fuck is this? So immediately, I'm screenshotting his profile, and I'm sending it to my friends, like, is this the man? This doesn't look like him. They were like, yeah, Key, that looks like him. Was he, he just not had cute? On a hat. No. And I'm like, is he just not photogenic? <laughs> like, I need to see him again in real life, because it made no sense for it to be that much of a difference between how he looked in the Instagram photos and how he looked in real life. Like... Do people normally tell you you look... I'm shocked. Do, have, do people normally tell you, or what do you think? Do you think you look better on in on Instagram or in real life? Uh, I think it depends on the day. Probably Instagram. Well, it depends. I don't know. It depends on what's been posted lately. Was I posting cute pics? Is it just clips from the episode? I don't know. Was mm. I rough and depressed? I don't know. Was I looking <laughs> chunky? I don't know. Um, and then when you saw me out, how long has it been since the last feel... <laughs> What stage of my braids? Were my braids fresh or were they giving Bob Marley? Like, what's up? I don't know. I think, yeah, it depends. But my probably last Instagram. tech told me that I need, after these, se- I need to let these fall out and I need to take a break from lashes. And I hate when they give you suggestions like that. Because who asked you? Right, because I didn't. Isn't this a service? Why did she say that? She said that you, I've caused real stress on my lashes. in Because, you know, we get our lash extensions and then when we get our makeup done, it makes it look like you don't have your lashes done because I don't do the glam set. And so I get the lash on top. And even though I try to tell them don't put it right on, she was like, your real lashes are really fucked up. And I was like, what do you do in this situation? Do I just keep fucking them up? Because I'm already bald head eyelash? Well, I decided I'm just going to keep fucking them up because I did (laughs) let mine fall out. And I said, what the fuck is this? And I was like, oh, hell no. I done fucked my shit up. Yeah. Uh, But oh, well. Like, you think I'm just going to walk around like a naked mole rat? It's really hard when you get into these beauty trends because I'm, I'm not sure that I'm really pretty without all of it. 
And I don't really care because I'm wearing it. <laughs> like, who gives a fuck? I don't think anybody has ever been scared when they woke up next to me, you know, so it's all good. Yeah. I have been a little scared before. Like, damn, got to put the cup down. Yeah. Should have went home with him. <sighs> okay, but yeah, um, it was very, very different when I saw him on the gram. This he should have never sent me his Instagram because it wasn't even like he but had that's shit what I'm saying. Going. He thinks that he is hot shit. That's why people you do that. So? Well, he and then asked, they don't realize that you're really the hot shit. Now we've made this exchange. You see that I didn't. I don't think that he ever thought. If he thought that he's delusional, and I just need to run. I don't think he thought he was hot shit. I think he just wanted to run a quick investigation. Oh, because I know they do it. I know they do it. I've seen the men do it when they when they forgot I was around. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, what's another one that is an immediate block? This is an immediate block for me. I what? absolutely hate this. And it is not that I don't want to help people, but I don't like when someone tries to like mask they want help for their podcast with a holler. Oh my like gosh. Like you start the DM with something else and then you're like, I'm starting a podcast. I'm okay, blocking good you. <laughs> I got to block you, my boy. I don't want the podcast boys. I don't want the podcast boys. I don't want anybody asking me how. I don't know what to tell you. I tell the people, you can book a consultation, but this is not about to be you draining me. Do you know how many years we have been doing this for you to just think that you can come in, pretend to flirt with me, take me to breakfast, the cheapest fucking meal of the day, and you think that I'm about to tell you everything I've learned and you haven't even taken the time to do a simple Google search? That's how I feel about anything anybody really podcasting or anything but like no you're not about to milk me for information well and also it's like when people do that I'm not really sure what you're look I'm what do you want someone to tell you start get a microphone and come <laughs> up with some topics and start talking like I don't really know what else to tell you other than that I'm not coming up with your topics for you I don't know but I think but I'm that- blocking you that's what ends up happening. And I'll, I'll send people to other people that I know offer that as a service. And it's like, well, I'm not really trying to pay. Well, what are we talking about then? Because I'm, I don't want to send people I know who do this for a living. Mm-hmm. I don't want to send them people that's not talking about paying. Bitch, fuck you. Yeah. You got to pay. Um, I asked somebody this last night, what is an immediate block for them? And they said when they take women on dates and they eat wings with a fork. And I was like, damn, you would block me. I eat wings with a fork. Medina, I would block you. Why? When have you ever ate wings with a fork? I've not seen this. I eat them you do it fork. on dates. I do it on dates, and I do it even if I'm in the privacy of my own home. I don't wings like when with wings with a bone. I don't like, like when wing juice that are split gets under my nails. It's nasty. Medina, you are lying. I am not. I have seen you eat a chicken wing. Not that I have never eaten a chicken wing with okay. my fingers, but for the most part, if I am at a restaurant and I get the chicken wings, I'm taking you the get fork a and wing sliding appetizer. it down, the meat down. Where and I'm the bougie one. <laughs> you still are. <laughs> where are all my my wing fork eaters at? Because eat I know we're a, a community. Fork? If it's big enough, I will do it with the pizza. If it's big enough, if it's too big, and you gotta fall. I'm not from New York. Mm-hmm. I am still a Southern belle. I need to cut that thing up because I don't want the grease. When that grease comes trickling down your hand from a greasy piece of pepperoni or something, and it's just like orange juice running down, that is gross. I don't yeah. want that. I need to dab it with a paper towel. I have been known to eat a few chicken wings with a fork. Mm, It's easier uh, to dip in the ranch. I don't dip. Oh. I guess if you were dipping, that is a lot of stuff on your nails. We need to do a Patreon where we're eating wings. Hot ones. Okay. (laughs) Maybe we can do it this weekend. Maybe we can do it in Dallas. Because I know the chicken wings will be good in Dallas. Mm -hmm. We can have an assortment. of. We can do a little mukbang. I love chicken Um, wings. What else? I don't like when, uh, I saw you wrote too many jokes that aren't funny. Too many jokes. I can't stand when they have too many jokes that are like dad jokes or just corny ass jokes that aren't that funny. And it's like, I would have let you make it if you would have just did a little chuckle or waited for me to laugh. But you're laughing, belly laugh at your own joke. Yeah, or you're waiting for me to laugh. And it's like, I'm fake laughed out. Like, I don't know what, I want to go home. And I'm not doing it. The fake laugh. I'm just going to be looking like, are you okay? Are you nervous? Because I get weird when I'm nervous around somebody I find attractive. So that's what I usually assume. And when they say no, it's like, well, that was your chance. Blocked. Um, I've There have been moments when I invite somebody's son over in the past. And I know you got to be clear about that. <laughs> these <laughs> niggas is out here lurking. Ooh. Um, and I don't hear you wash your hands. 
Oh, in the bathroom? In the bathroom. That's I don't a, like that. I'm probably not talking to you anymore because that's nasty. That's one of those things where people don't realize you need to pay attention to stuff like that. Why have you not washed your hands? Or will you go to his bathroom and hang in on soap? Or you can tell he put water in that soap. Mm -hmm. Get some more soap. I walked in, you had hookah, wings, and a fucking liquor. All this liquor. And you can't buy no soap? Yeah. Soap is under $10. Yeah. Come and on. order it on Amazon. Just keep You can get it on Amazon. Go puff. You don't even have to leave the house. Instacart. There's so many services. Why don't you have soap? You ain't got no soap, soap, but you ready to get me drunk. And put your little grubby fingers in my vagina and my booty hole. Ooh, with all that bacteria. And now yeah. I got bacterial vaginosis. Okay, and some other things you brought back. From a dirty thumb. <sighs> That's nasty. I don't um, like it. If you have ever, this is male or female, friend, trying to be a friend or trying to holler, if you start any message off in my DMs with, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not... Then you already know it's rude, so what you need to do is delete. Mm-hmm. Think about it and rephrase, or keep scrolling. Yeah. Do something else. Because you are blocked. Yourself. And I can't tell you how many people I've blocked because of stuff like that, and then they'll go to the cocktails page and, and try to like tell on me to you. But I see oh, the message. They'll people like, send me messages all the time saying you blocked them, and I say, well, what did you do? Because I'm trying to see, do I need to block you too, bitch? Hey, like, I'm telling you. we can have a block party if you want to. <laughs> You well, say, I might have said, oh, block, bitch. I it, don't like that. If you say anything remotely disrespectful about my family, and I mean remotely, if you even say something... Maybe some, talk about your family? Sometimes people say things and they don't realize they're being rude. Like, if someone's like, oh, wow, um, you your sister's pretty, but you're prettier. Block. Why would you... You're I blocked. can't stand a backhanded I can't, compliment. I, like, why would you say why that? Why do you just, have to cut somebody else to say something nice? You could have just told me I'm pretty. Yeah. Block. And that would have been fine. Or see my, my nieces and my nephew be like, oh, I know their dad's white. Block. Because why did you say that? Yep, that's rude. I don't Block. like it. I've been blocking people because they like, how old is your brother? Oh, your brother fine. Block, block, block. block. <laughs> he is grown, but not for you old hags. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to be a sugar mama now. He that's is okay. cute. Block. Block. <laughs> <laughs> he is. We prayed hard over him. We had to make sure that he didn't grow up to be a little man. You know, we were very concerned about that. The whole family. Yeah, uh, prayer works. If you've ever tried to pit me against any other podcaster, including my own co-host, block. You're blocked. You're never, and I'm blocking you on the cocktails page and my page and Kiki's page. People annoy me. <laughs> and my page. People annoy me with that. I'm just like, listen. First of all, mind your business. <laughs> just move, do something else mm -hmm. with your day. Mm. What's another one? Um. Hmm. I'm trying to think of an... Oh, oh, if we go on a date, and this has happened before, and you bend down and your butt crack shows, you're Ooh, blocked after like that. that. Why is y'all booty... Where are your drawers at? Pull up your pants. Yeah. Why is it so low? What is going on? And then when your butt crack shows and you don't pull your pants up, you don't feel that? Because I'll be feeling it. Yeah. That's odd. Um, I also don't like when you uh, text me back to back. Like, you text me something. You didn't ask a question, but I'm assuming you wanted a response because when I didn't give you one, then you get a sassy-ass attitude. And all sassy niggas get blocked. Sassy niggas are not welcomed here. Mm -mm. Unless Drake Too much is sass, sassy. you won't get no ass. What? If Drake happens to be sassy, he is accepted. Because I'm telling you right now, I love him. You don't know him. <laughs> that is such a strong emotion. Or a stranger. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And I say I'm crazy. Maybe I need to stop saying that. Um, I don't know what else. I mean, I'll block people for a lot of things. I saw a video, and I think this is a good idea. I kind of want to try this. This girl said that whenever she's talking to somebody, and it's like, you know, you're you're talking to somebody, you're dating them, or whatever the situation is, and they do something, and you're like, I'm done with him. And then they hit you up later, and you go back. She says every time she says she's done with somebody now, and she knows she needs to stick to it, she deletes the text. Well, she changes their contact name to uh, Tombstone. Mm -hmm. And then she deletes the text thread. So then she has all these people saved as these tombstones, so she calls it her graveyard. And so she's like, when they text me, I don't have the text thread, so I can't tell who it is. And it just, she was like, I don't like to block people, kind of like how you said mm -hmm. it. But she was like, it gives me a little chuckle whenever they text me. And I'm like, who the fuck is this dead ass nigga texting me? Does she ever respond? No, she doesn't respond. She just sees them and keeps on going. I was like, you know what? That's what I need to do. Because it's a text thread. I can change your name to something else. But once I figure out who it is, mm -hmm. it's no good. Um, My graveyard would be full. 
<laughs> Everybody's blocked. It is hard out here in these. It is, but sometimes it's kind of fun. Yeah. Like, I will say, overall, I enjoy the dating experience. And now that I've been getting out more and meeting more guys, I've been enjoying myself. I mean, I'm still blocking people every day. But uh, sometimes that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Like, mm, dodge a bullet, and I'm not going back. Yeah. Making better choices. Good for you. We'll see how long this lasts. It's only been, like, a week. That's still good. That's progress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um... I had one in my head, but I I forgot it. It was a good one. It was uh, um, another an, block. It was one. another immediate block. I can't I can't remember what it is. So I guess we'll just. Oh, I don't like when people ask me. Uh, oh, I remember it. Go ahead. How do you feel about if you go on a date with someone and they get okay? Two forms of the question. They get too drunk on the date and you don't know them that well. It's let's say it's a first or second date. They get drunk, drunk, or they get drunk and send you a like an Instagram video, and then you you see it, but then they go back and try to delete it. That has never happened to me. The second one, the Instagram video or sending a video. Really, the video thing has never happened. I don't know what I would do. Did you save the video? I want to see. They deleted <laughs> it. Oh no, you gotta save it as soon as you see it. Yeah, I didn't do that. Damn. But it was. Um, I I'm like a little mess. Uh, no, that's never happened. But if I go on a date with somebody and they get too drunk, it's not an immediate block. Only because I've probably been there before. But I reserve my drunkenness usually for somebody I already know. So you already know what time it is. Um, you get one more try after that. Mm. But it depends. Did I have to carry you out? It was bad. You could. You were throwing up at the table. Like, how bad was it? Or were you just slurry You got to drive their car home. You got to explain to them what happened in the morning. I'm not going to block you, but we can't date. <laughs> But if me and my homegirls want to go get drunk, I know who's paying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a no for me. I'm I feel like we're too old. And how are you gonna be getting fucked up? I can't get fucked up. Then only one of us can. That's not fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You get. I think if you get too drunk of me before I know you, it's probably a block. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't like when people ask me. Um, Questions about my ethnicity. That really boils my blood. That be happening? Yes. And How it's do they annoying. Do it? Um, I don't know. They, they just ask me. It, it's never, it doesn't ever really matter. I'm like, what are you talking about? But they always ask me what I'm mixed with, and I don't like that question. Or they don't always, but people, when they ask the question, they ask me what I'm mixed with. And why would you assume that I'm not? Right. And they just look at, I don't know what they're looking at. But that's what they say. Well, you should, and you need to pull out your Ancestry.com. And show them. Nigeria is number one. Don't that play with crazy. it. That is crazy. Let us know if you guys have any immediate blocks. Um, I would love to hear them. Uh, we're going to move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, we're going to share some advice and hopefully help some people out. Maybe not. <laughs> Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Hey, ladies, it's me, Diane. And this week, I have a really great date weekend for ya. So it's an event called the R&B Picnic. Seems like it's going to be fun. Tickets are affordable. It's Mother's Day weekend, so you can plan ahead. You always say the men don't plan. Maybe you should make a date, huh? Try it out. Send them the details. Google it. R&B Picnic, Piedmont Park. Bye. Okay, and that was Indecisive Diane. If you have some advice that you need from us, make sure you email us, advice at cocktailspod.com. You want to read the first one? Yes, so this one is titled, Should I Be Nervous? Mm. Hi, loves. I'm a new subscriber, and I love the podcast. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Okay, 
Advice. I've been dating my high school crush for almost five years. I'm 23, he's 24. We've lived together for two years and decided it wasn't working out. Here's my problem. Before we started dating, I had already been with other people, but I was his first sexual partner. Needless to say, the sex was garbage in all caps. I could only teach but so much. Anyway, I've been on Hinge and met a lot of nice guys that want to take me out. Conversation's good and everything, but I'm nervous. I need advice or tips for dating. By the way, most of the guys are like 26 to 32 in age. Any advice would be appreciated. I love y'all. Um, I view the show on YouTube, but I'm going to get Patreon soon. Um, okay, so... So she wants advice on how to date. I think I, I, I know love that, that question. I know that you said that the sex was garbage with this guy. The reality is you're gonna have to kiss a few frogs. And that's okay. It's just about the experience. I think it's important as far as the sex part goes, that you don't put all of your faith in your partner to please you. Like you gotta you gotta do something too with that part. And then with dating, I think that when you just try to enjoy the experience that you guys are having together and then actually talking to the person you're on the date with to get to know who they are, not what they can do for you, but who they are and how you guys' lives might be compatible or comparable or whatever so that you can see, like, is this a match? Is this somebody I actually enjoy being around? Does it feel stressful to be around this person? Do I feel at ease around this person after the general first date nerves wear away I think all, you gotta pay attention to your body and how your body is responding to being around somebody and then just how you feel when you leave the person mm -hmm. if you leave um, how does it feel what, what are you thinking do you think about them again or do you not think about them until they hit you up and just kind of go have fun with it I don't think you should take anything too serious but take it serious enough that you're not wasting your time or theirs exactly I, and I also think that like one thing that I have been trying to unlearn and rewire as a woman is like we always want the man to lead us in dating and in almost everything dating sex the whole relationship and a lot of times we be mad at these niggas because they they don't they're not leading us right because you never gave them a sense of direction you didn't know where you wanted to be led to so that nigga just aimlessly blindlessly walking and thinking he's doing a good job which really it's it's your fault if you have no sense of direction i think have an idea of the things you want to do it's okay if he doesn't have an idea for a date, but you do have an idea for a date. I don't think everything needs to be a test. If you are going on a lot of dates with people and you have some things that you know you want to do, take the lead and say, this is what I want to do. Let's go do this. Have, like Kiki said, have fun. And that's part of the fun. It's not fun when you m rely on the man for everything. Them, these, we've already said these niggas don't be knowing what to do. And I also think that the sad truth is no matter how much they beat their chest, some men are not leaders, mm -hmm. and it's just the truth, and some women are, and I think that the sooner people just accept the roles that they actually want, not what other people are telling mm -hmm. them that it should be, there are certain things that I don't want to be in charge of, so I need a match who is okay with that, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you try to force somebody and tell them that they have to have these certain traits, every man is not a good leader. Mm -hmm. Every woman is not a good leader. It just depends. So you need to find somebody that's going to be good with you on that. If they're not good at coming up with stuff and you want to share that, that's a good idea if that works for you. But if it's going to annoy you, that's not a match for you because mm -hmm. he's not creative in that way. And what, what are you doing? You gonna, you're going to end up frustrating him and yourself because you're trying to make him be something that he's not. You gotta take people sometimes with who they are. You know, when it's not something bad, it's just, that's not their character. Yeah, that's okay. true. Have fun, girl, have fun. So the next one says threesome versus in my head. What? Hey ladies, how are y'all? I love your show and the grown woman shit you preach every week. Definitely one of my favorite podcasts to play while I commute to work. So I need your help. I'm 30 and finally finding myself and venturing out into different things. I grew up pretty sheltered and sex was not a topic that could be discussed. Now that I am grown, married with two kids, I'm learning that I actually really love sex, especially with my fine ass husband. He's great at all the things, all of them. I, on the other hand, had to learn a lot, had a lot to learn, and quickly. I think I've done a great job. He said to me in the middle of an argument that I do fuck him better. I was super proud, even though I was supposed to be upset. With all of the exploring and conversations we have had, I'm also learning that I may be a little curious about being with a woman. 
I hear that we fuck each other better because we know all the spots and have a more sensual approach to sex. However, I am not interested in the body fluids. Well, <laughs> we got them. Right. Um, I do not want to eat pussy at all. I have no interest in discovering how it tastes. I'm not even curious to know how I taste. Huh? I just take my husband's word about mine tasting good. All right. Also, I'm not sure how I would really feel about physically seeing another woman's ass on my husband's dick. Now I know that's kind of the point of a threesome, but I reside in my head all the time and want to find a way out. I do find women attractive. My husband and I actually look at women together a lot. I want the experience for myself because it sounds fun and exhilarating. I also want the experience for my husband because I want to show him that I'm not the little girl, scared, shy, he met. Well, mm. you kind of, you scared you to are. taste some pussy. Okay, and to see him fuck somebody else. What are y'all going to be doing? Right. Playing patty cake? Okay, I've never even kissed another woman before. Strictly dickly all my life. We know. I know this experience will be more for us, but I also want to make sure person number three has a great time too. I do not want to be that wife who just makes the night awkward or cancels it all together while we are already standing there booty hole naked. That was for Medina. Oh, um, <laughs> no, booty hole. How can I get out of my head and prepare myself for this experience? I know I have to do this when I am ready, but how can I get ready? What were some of the things you did to prepare prepare yourself for your first threesome? Did you want it first or was the idea presented to you? Side note, listen to your show has helped me be more sexually open. Good. There was a cocktail you read on episode 282 about a woman and her husband having a threesome, and it sounded amazing. I listened to it three times. <laughs> Kiki, your voice while reading that thing sent shivers through, my, through me multiple times. Oop. I want this. Now how? Sign to help me get out of my head and get another girl or another woman in our bed. You know, it's just so interesting because it's like you have so many hard no's that it's almost like, and I feel like this is always my advice to women like you who like, you don't want to eat no pussy. You don't really want her to do anything with your man. You, you don't want to taste your own vagina. You don't really want to kiss the girl. I feel like you would just what need... What do you want? Yeah, I feel like you would need to pay somebody and give her, like, have an interview with her and let her know, like, what you would want her to do. That's bo To me, that's boring. That's so boring. But you sound kind of boring, I'm not going to lie. And that is no shade. Or if you're going to invite another woman into your bed and you're not going to eat her vagina, I feel like you need to trick off. You need to get her a gift or something. Because it's like, when you come to do a threesome, at least when I come to do a threesome, I'm looking at it like... Of, we might we have some some minor rules, but it's not no like I'm not kissing your husband. I'm not you're not gonna eat my. I'm not eating your pussy if you're not eating mine. That's not fair. It's either if you're not gonna eat it, then your husband needs to eat it. Somebody needs to be eating my pussy. I'm and not, if your husband eat my pussy, ho, why is you here? You can go because you don't want to see shit. You don't want to do shit. So I really want to know like what I don't. What do you want to do it for? That's like, what I'm confused about. Too. If you just want her to, if you just want to get your pussy, out, you need to just hire a prostitute. And then send or her on find her. a girl who's into that. It's gonna take some work. It won't be me. It won't. I'm be not me. showing. I'm gonna be honest. I would not show up to this threesome. It sounds very boring. It's and like, it sounds like you might try to fight me. It just sounds like it's good. Like she's like Martha Stewart, and she's You're just gonna cry. He's like very square, and it's like you want you want to please your husband. That's how I'm reading this. You really want to please him. Mm -hmm. Because again, and you had a little idea, but it was like that was in your head, not in real life. Yeah, body fluids, bitch. Are you fucking kidding me? So when he eats your pussy, you don't kiss him after. That's what I'm saying. If somebody, if you, if you eat my booty hole, I'm gonna kiss you. Period. It's like that's sex. Sex is nasty. It's disgusting, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like you got all these rules. It's not gonna be fun. Somebody's gonna. I hate a bunch of rules. I hate a bunch of rules. What are we doing here? Good night. Goodbye. Blocked. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> blocked. You are blocked, ma'am. Sorry, we don't want to turn you away, but we do. You need to, I don't know, maybe you need to watch more porn. Maybe you need to watch more porn and then that will feel like another woman's in the bed with y'all. Or maybe you could go to a sex club. Mm. Maybe not with your husband because it's going to piss you off if somebody flirts with him. See if you have an open-minded friend or something. I don't know if I if you should go by yourself, but... 
Um, go to a sex club and watch it and maybe just get more comfortable. There is going to be some bold women there that are going to come up and flirt with you. And they might just be so starved for pussy that they will just eat it and not care. That happened to me when we went. And mm -hmm. I didn't eat no pussy. The girls was eating my pussy. And I was like, okay. They just really wanted to do that. And I was like, hmm, okay. Try it and see how it goes. And it's like, okay, I like that feeling. Mm -hmm. And you might be a little turned on and be like, okay, I can handle this. Yeah. Maybe. Let us know if you ever do it. Send us a cocktail. Please. Okay, and we're going to move on to the cocktails. So, if you guys have a cocktail, make sure you email us cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Okay, so this first cocktail is actually a cocktail. Here it goes. Hey, ladies, just call me Jay. So I'm an OG listener. I've been listening for years now at the peak of my fun phase, and I was living my best life. Loved your Orlando show. I wish I got to meet you, ladies. Anywho, I unfortunately have a cocktail, but there's light at the end of this tunnel. So backtrack to a few years ago, 2018. I met a guy on Bumble. Thanks to y'all, I was really comfortable in my sexuality and I was openly dating. We need to start a class or something because we really out here teaching bitches and I want money for it. He was six feet tall, nice body. He worked out almost daily, had a good job. I love watching a nigga work out. Woo, healthy. He loved his mama, had no kids, the whole package, right? So we went from texting to talking on the phone every night to going on dates. He finally worked his way up to getting invited to my place. At the time, I wasn't looking for anything serious and I just wanted to have fun. So I was also talking to someone else back home. At the time, um, I moved to another city for work. So one night we went on a cute little date at a restaurant and I invited him to my place afterwards. So we're watching a movie, cuddled up in my bed. Then we started kissing. He was rubbing me nicely and sucked a titty or two, but he seemed hesitant to go further. Now, there was a lot of sexual energy, and I honestly wanted some dick. I wanted his dick. So I began to climb on top of him, continued kissing him, and I began to move my hips slowly to show him that I wanted some now, and he needs to stop being shy. He proceeds to whisper in my ear, I want you, but I don't know if you can handle this. I do a cute little giggle, and I say seductively, let me show you what I can do. He pulls his pants off while I, while I undress, and I cannot tell whether he's hard or not. Red flag. <laughs> I didn't want to get in my head because usually the men I encounter are packing, but I convinced myself that maybe he needs some more time and some head. His dick was small. We start kissing again, and he basically jumps right into it and climbs on top of me. Red flag number two. I like to either give or receive head before, so I open my legs for him, and I ask him, is he in? He says, yes, and proceeds to thrust literally three times. Then he flinched a little, stopped, and rested his body on me. I asked him, are you okay? And he says, yeah, cautiously, then proceeds to say he came already. Oh, hell no. Nah. Y'all, I was so pissed. He walks to the bathroom to remove the condom, and when he comes back, he says, I'm sorry. I usually don't come that fast. Yes, you Red do. Red flag number three. Fast forward to a week later, and I let him redeem himself, and girl. Literally the same scenario where he comes fast and I never got a chance to show him what I really could do. He was one, a one minute man with a small dick and that was a deal breaker for me. Slowly ghosted him because the chemistry dissolved and now four years later, I'm happily married to the guy from back home. The sex is good. He knows how to use his big old dick, places me in good positions, hits all the right spots and he eats a mean pussy. Getting wet even thinking about it. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you went through that, but at least there was light at the end of the tunnel. For it you. happens to the best of us. Okay, next one. Hello, ladies. I love your show, and I am a big fan. I have a story to share. I try to be detailed without making it long as fuck, so I hope you enjoy. So I've been dating this woman for a few months, and we were sort of on this roller coaster of will we be just friends or more than friends? We had been intimate throughout the summer and then nothing for a few months, but we talked all the time on the phone, did brunches and dinners, talked about what we both wanted, sent each other memes throughout the day, you know, basically super connected and trying to figure it out. So when I get invited to a party that is going to put me on her side of town, we make plans that after the party, I would stop by and watch a movie that she and I had always talked about watching together. 
I get to her house, and of course, I've had a few drinks, and I look amazing. We are both femme <laughs> presenting and both super pretty. Okay. Um, we sit on the couch, and she drapes her legs over me, and I'm automatically rubbing her, her legs, and we're talking. I can barely hear the words she's saying because she has on a sec- she has on sexy boy shorts and a cami set, and I can't stop looking at her mouth because I'm dying to kiss her lips. After talking for a minute, we start kissing, and then I decide she's been teasing me all night, so I'll give her a little payback. Being a little tease, I stop kissing her and say, okay, let's watch this movie. I turn to the TV, but rub my hands up and down her inner thighs, just barely avoiding her pussy. I keep rubbing and, you know, accidentally brush the pussy lips a couple times. She immediately gives me a sexy whimper and says, take these off. I tease her and say, no. She asks again and tells me to stop playing, and I say no again. So she looks at me and starts sliding her boy shorts off herself. Now, side note, Aunt Flo is in town for me, but I'm not even tripping because she is fine in every single way, and I already know I'm about to devour her. I help her slide off her shorts, and that gorgeous pussy is calling my name. I drop to my knees and slide her closer to me off of the edge of her couch, and I'm tasting the best pussy I've ever had. <laughs> She's thick, like a size 14, no stomach, amazing thick thighs, and no waist, like perfectly thick. So I am enjoying holding and squeezing them thighs while I'm kissing and licking and sucking between her legs. She is wet beyond wet and moaning and calling my name and touching my hair. And a few times we randomly find each other's eyes and share a sexy gaze. It's straight as lesbian fantasy. It's straight as lesbian fantasy can get. I already know she has a praise kink, so I'm telling her how fine she is and how good she tastes and how much I like her. And I mean everything that I'm saying, and she is in heaven. I slowly start fingering her, and her whimper and moan has my pussy throbbing. I finally whisper and tell her to go get me a toy. She comes out of her bedroom with a perfect handheld dildo, and I tell her to turn around. I swear, if I could have grown a penis and fucked her from the back, I would have. <laughs> that butter pecan comp... comp- complected i'm starting to say complicated complected round ass looked amazing she bends over and leans on the back of her couch and i slowly start thrusting the dildo in and out she is coming all over everything that ass was calling me so i started eating her pussy from the back and letting my tongue trace up her ass while that dildo is moving in and out and she is enjoying every minute of it She's sexy and moaning and coming, and I am enjoying how much I'm pleasing her. After fucking her good for a few minutes, I turn her around to face me, and I start sucking on her titties and neck and playing with her pussy. She pulls my top down and sucks on my titties, and we make out moaning and crazy heavy breathing for another few minutes. By now, I can tell she's been properly fucked, and it's getting late, so I tell her how good she looks and how much I like her as we both get ourselves together and put clothes on. I go to her fridge, grab a bottle of water, throw on my knee-high boots, and tell her I'm going to head home. A few days later, when we're on the phone, she tells me that night she couldn't stop watching me because I look so pretty. And to have someone that pretty going down on her was just crazy arousing to her. It actually later became a little text joke that my pretty face wanted to be somewhere, and she would know exactly what I was talking about. Well, I don't have a happy ending. I wish I could say we figured our shit out and that we are just fine, but we didn't. I did get some of that amazing pussy one time a few weeks later when we had a bomb night of sex after an event that we went to together. But that's a whole other cocktail. Unfortunately, we decided there's just too much drama in our whole situation and we will just be platonic friends. Well, that's my cocktail, and I hope you enjoyed it. Sign, let's see if this just friends shit will actually work. Probably not. The more that <laughs> I hear about, like, situations like this, I'm always, like, I look at friend groups, and I'll be like, who eating pussy? <laughs> I always do that now, because it's really? like, the, even in my friend groups, like, people have hooked up in your friend groups. People have hooked up. I'm all, I look at all the friend groups and be like, sometimes I'll be looking at my mama's friend groups and be like, do y'all be eating pussies? I never thought about that. Because what if that is just going on? Well, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me none because yeah pussies is getting eight <laughs> and booty holes is getting plugged Ooh. thank you for that i was really i i imagined the whole thing how they looked what they me had too. on um that was a very sexy read kiki mm-hmm. just submit mm-hmm. to dipsy <laughs> i know right <laughs> all um, right y'all before we get going some last announcements i wanted to tell you guys if you haven't booked bali already it is not too late even though the trip is may 27th through june 3rd <gasps> Um, you could still book if you just got it like that and can pay in full now. Go to paradiseandvibe.com. 
Um, if you don't, then you can come with us to Tulum, Tulum, October 6th through December. I mean, I'm tired. October 6th through October 10th. Uh, the theme for that is orgasmic breath work. So book now if you haven't already, paradiseandvibe.com. It will be amazing. And if you haven't purchased your cookbook, please do. It's classy based, K-L-A-S-S-Y B-A-S-T-E dot com. Digital cookbook, physical cookbook, and individual recipes available for immediate download. Try some new recipes. Um, there's some basic stuff, some more complicated stuff, all sorts of things in there. And I'll be updating it on a weekly basis. So check back and see what we have. And then I just want to remind you guys one more time about our live shows. So this Saturday, we're in Seattle at uh, The Crocodile. April 15th, we are at the Royal Theater in Toronto. Uh, May, is it May 9th? May 9th, we are in Birmingham mm -hmm. at Stardome. And then May 20th, we are in Dallas, Texas at the studio at the factory in Deep Ellum. So buy your tickets today. Check the link in the description box or the links in our social media profiles. It's the only place you need to buy the tickets. Don't get gut out here. And on that note, you guys, follow us on Instagram. I'm, uh, well, it's Cocktails Podcast, and I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Bean. And until next week, you guys, goodbye. goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.